Hi everyone, my name is Vincent Go. Welcome to this new Substance Designer 5 tutorial, uh, which is part of the Substance Designer Terran Maker series. Um, this is the third tutorial about uh, Ocean, and, and this is about the eighth or ninth about terrain in general. So, in case you haven't seen the previous ones, I invite you to click on the link that will appear on the screen right now. Um, so, during the previous videos, what we have done is create um, a terrain painter that allows to to make mountains like this one and driven by uh, just a simple SVG map. Uh, it could be whatever map, but we use an SVG map here. And in the last three videos, we blend it with a new graph that allow us to make the, the water here and uh, to adapt the color of the water depending on the depth of uh, of uh, the height map. Um, for this new tutorial, we are going to spend some time a bit in Substance Designer, but also in the, into Unity, uh, because the tutorial is about how to export, prepare and export all this work, and to use it uh, to use it inside Unity. So let's start. So before we have to to prepare all what we have done here. So in order to start, what we are going to do is to think about what we want to export inside Unity. What do we need? So let, let's look at the output we have. We have the height that we are definitely going to use. <coughs> the diffuse, of course. Um, the normal map, we, we will use it. And um, specular map will be useful as well. So with these four maps, it should, it should be enough. Um, what we want to do as well is to offer the possibility to the artist to change the map inside uh, inside Unity. So instead of having the SVG map here, what we are going to do is to create a grayscale input that we are going to plug here. So of course right now it makes the mountain disappear, but in theory I have saved uh, an input so we are going to see it here. Give me two seconds. Yeah, here for example, I, I made a small map, which is exactly the actually the SVG. I'm going to put it in resource. I link it. So we have it here. It's, it's called Mountain Guide, and just so we can see right now what we're doing. I'm replugging it. So right now it's really the input, and I just create a link between the bitmap. So so we have our input. We have our, our output. What we want to check is to make sure that the graph is relative to parent because for the size because the parent will be unity and we want to check that it's the same here for example here we are going to say relative to uh, to parent as well as you can see we, it doesn't seem to do anything so it's because we will have to go inside the the graph of the mountain to, to make sure that it's also the case. So let's put it to relative to parent and it should be way better. 256. I'm just checking there is no, no maps that would change that. Let's see at the end. So if we go back now we see that the size ha uh, has changed. <coughs> this way you are you are making sure that it's really unity that will control the size and you, you didn't set any of the nodes to be really uh, absolute for example so it seems to be to be fine so right now what we're going to check also is to check the name because right now you see it's output output out ah, this one is good this one is good this one I'm going to call it hate label as well. There is a label already here. Um, and this one, specular, specular. So, so these one are good. Uh, last, uh, another thing we want to make sure is to see which um, we want to expose some parameters. So for example for the water we already have some interesting stuff. We are going to place them in a group that we call water so it would be easier for, for for the user to to work with it. So water 
water and water it's always good to, to spend a bit of time making your interface interface as clear as possible so for the user you will save the time you, you will lose doing that you will save it uh, avoiding all the artists to, to ask how it works where is it etc so for clarity it's better so right now we have exposed some control for the water and we want to do the same for for the mountains uh, because as you see you have the snow level and the the snow intensity that we would like to expose as well so what you can do is right click here and you say expose parameters and I'm going to put a prefix here snow underscore and I'm going to expose these two stuff here you see there is a redundancy I'm going to fix it later so right, oh, and you see I can put a group then I never try so snow took let's try so if we look here we already have the group created for us so really handy and here we have the snow 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 actually we could have put directly there good to know okay and here Snow, snow. So basically, you can put uh, the name, the input name uh, for the, uh, the group, and it will be used as prefix as well, which is really handy. Okay, so let's look at what it. Let's look at that. So now that's how what we will have inside uh, Unity. So I think the last thing we want to to make sure is as you see here we have a lot of working graph but we don't want to the user to get all of them so what you can do is to when you click on them and lo you look in the attributes you look uh, at output computation and you want to make sure that just the ocean tutorial is uh, is uh, to yes so this one is yes in theory i made them already so yes no 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 perfect so we are ready to expose that so you have to save your substance and click here to publish i call it uh, terrain maker underscore sbs5 perfect um, i saved it save it um, here in front it's written uh, i already got this one you, if i want to overwrite it yes so at the same time you can learn french what a useful video and default file name for archive, archive content it's okay we want to give the ability to change the size and the random seed so let's go okay so we are done right now with substance designer 5 so I'm going to show unity so here is an empty send the first thing you want to do is to uh, drag and drop the, your new substance inside so that's what I'm doing um, in case it doesn't work it may be because your, your engine is not up to date uh, because in the last uh, patch update they added the ability to, to read they actually updated the substance engine and now you should be able to read the substance designer 5 uh, SBS AR um, if you haven't uh, get it uh, already I'm going to put the link directly on the video so you can get the patch so what do we have uh, we have right now the the substance here and as you see there is already a material which is generated so we can rename it uh, ocean test for example and uh, in this particular case, I made um, uh, I made a specific uh, shader uh, to because it was uh, easier to, to display what we want to do. Uh, the only thing is this shader is made with um, Shader Forge, which is a super cool tool uh, inside Unity that allows you to, to make shaders in a nodal way, like this in the same graphical way than you do substances. Uh, this is extremely powerful and. Again, and I really like that but the only thing the only problem that I have right now is that um, you cannot directly use uh, a shader made with shader force with a substance 
but there is a trick that I'm going to show you. So first what I'm going to create, uh, I'm not using a terrain, I'm using directly a plane, like this one here. And now I'm going to create a material. First I'm going to show you something. Here I can drag and drop the, the, the terrain, the, the material, sorry. <coughs> and as you see right now you just have um, the water, but here you have all the, the attributes of your material. So what we're going to do is to place our input here. Um, so I'm going to drag and drop the mountain guide as well. I'm going to drag it and drop it here just for so I know where it is. And now, okay, I will lock the material. And now if I drag and drop the terrain here, you will see that the terrain will be generated. But as you can see, there is no really height value. It doesn't deform the mesh right now. That's why I created a new material, a new shader. So what I'm going to do is first create a new material. Uh, this one, maybe? Yes, it's run test. Uh, seems to be good. Let me check. Yes, uh, VG8 my test. VG for Vincent Go. It's me. So what I'm going to do now is to drag. Uh, what you can do is actually from the substance material you can drag and drop the texture directly here. Um, so here, um, let's make it right. So here I have the high. The diffuse should be here. The height map is here. Um, I need a normal map. And uh, this one should be the specular. Mm, for some reason, I didn't expose the specular. Okay, anyway. So uh, here you see that the, the render is a bit crappy. Uh, don't worry. It, it's really it comes from the um, the software I use to to capture the screen. Uh, in uh, in Unity, in general, you see it extremely well. But okay, so it works. I would have liked to put the the specular as well. I don't know why it's not here. Let me check here. If I say, if I go to the material, okay, it's locked. Sorry. So if I go here, okay, b maybe because <coughs> the specular should be in one of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to to cheat for this one. Uh, I will put generate all outputs. And now I have all the map here. So as you see, this is the one I'm interested in. So I go back to my material and I'm going to drag and drop this. And this material, as you see, is a, is a special one that I made because I didn't want to prepare a mesh for, for this course because it's not the, the course. So what I did is actually this uh, shader is using dynamic tessellation. Meaning that depending on the distance, you can set up the resolution of, of the mesh. Uh, to explain, I didn't explain it really well, but basically, the closer the the mesh is from from the camera, and the more the more tessellated it will be, the more uh, subdivided. I, c I have control on that. I can, as you see, I can change change it. So it's it's really handy. Uh, this is something that that won't be handled by uh, mobile, for example, because it's not powerful enough. But if you have a good PC, or I would say even on, uh, on the last console, the PS4 or Xbox One, it should be handled. Um, and the cool thing is actually you can really uh, play with these parameters. So, uh, so basically, if you need more resource, you can uh, you can diminish that. So. You have way more control than redoing your mesh for every uh, for every iteration. It's a really easy way to iterate. So basically, <coughs> sorry, basically that's it for this video. So I'm going to prepare the shader and share it with you. Um, maybe today or tomorrow. Um, meanwhile, you can already try to do it with a regular shader. The only thing that will be missing is uh, the uh, the height maybe. Uh, and now, as I say, uh, don't worry. The the shading is really there in, in Unity. It's just in the video. I'm going to share some some screenshot as well. 
Um, another recommendation is, as you see, this is using one texture, which can be useful if you play from from the top like this, because you don't need too too much detail. Of course, if you are making a game, an adventure game, where you are close to the to here, you may want to use another technique, uh, which is to use uh, a, sp a splat map, uh, which is basically uh, a mask map, which uh, which contains different masks for the different zones, here for the water, for the, the ground, for the snow, for example. Uh, that's what we are going to do in uh, another video. Um, it would mean uh, to tweak a bit the, the substance here, uh, and in order to generate uh, so, uh, a full diffuse map, what, I, what I'm going to do is to separate them in different ones and uh, to make uh, the needed mask according to the different map we have. Uh, this should be, I think, in the next tutorial. I've been asked also if I can make a tutorial for, for the terrain color. I may want to do that. Maybe it will be my last one. It's not the most difficult part, so we'll see. Anyway, um, that's it for this video, so I, I'm going to put it like this because it's cooler. Um, I hope it, can, uh, it's, uh, it will be useful for most of you. Uh, if you have any questions, of course, you can put them in the comments. If you like this video, don't hesitate to, to reshare it with, uh, with friends and uh, with uh, anyone who you think could be interested. So thank you very much and have a great day.